My name is Beatrice Schimmer. I was born in Kronheim, Germany in 1933. That was the year that Hitler came to power. My father was the teacher and, uh, in Kronheim, Germany, which was a small village in Bavaria. He was the spiritual leader of the Jewish community. He was provided the rabbinical services even though his title was not rabbi. He also uh, provided kosher meat for the people in, the, in his jurisdiction, which included the small towns around Germany, where he would uh, slaughter chickens and uh, cattle for kosher consumption. One of the laws that was passed during that time was that kosher meat could no longer be provided to the Jewish people. That meant that the Jews of Germany could no longer have meat to eat if they were orthodox and kept kosher homes. Kronheim was like in an agricultural section, so there were farms around. And uh, the farmer's wife that my mother and parents had befriended would come and bring butter and eggs and, and uh, milk. In 1935, the Nuremberg Laws were passed. Non-Jewish Germans could no longer uh, sell anything to Jewish people. My mother told the farmer's wife, um, I'm not going to buy anything else from you. I don't want you to get in trouble. The farmer's wife said, no, I'm going to continue to bring. She would come in the middle of the night and hide under the back stairs whatever she was bringing, and my mother would hide the money under there so that uh, we would have something to eat. My father was also, you know, he would go on his rounds and uh, to different uh, cities or towns rather around Kronheim and teach the young boys for their bar mitzvah and teach them their uh, Jewish lessons. At one point he was threatened, uh, the uh, German police wanted to arrest him and uh, it turned out that he had to turn in his Hungarian passport. So not long after that, he received notice that he was going to be deported to Hungary, was trying to find a place, another country that we could go to. He knew that he needed to take his family off of the, the European continent. He did manage to find that in Cali, Colombia, or in the, the country of Colombia was accepting Jews, and so that, that was one place that we could go. And this had to have happened in 1936, because in 1937 is when we left Germany, uh, and we went to Cali, Colombia. At the time that we first got there, there were about 50 Jews living there in Cali, and uh, my father organized a synagogue. By the time we left, there were like uh, maybe 300 refugees that had come there. To my knowledge, I think that synagogue is still there in Cali. We lived in Cali until 1939. My mother's brother and his wife had emigrated to the United States directly from Germany because his wife had relatives in the United States. He managed to find someone who would sponsor us. So in March 1939, uh, we left Cali, Colombia and came to the United States. One interesting part of this story is that my sister and I, we had heard about the Statue of Liberty and we wanted my mother to wake us up and make sure that we were could see it as we came into the port of New York. We came into New York at like between four and five in the morning and my mother didn't want to wake us so she didn't 
And, but it was dark, and I don't even know if the Statue of Liberty at that time, this was 1939, I don't even know if it was lit at, at night at that time. And I had always, for the whole rest of my life, I mean, I've seen the Statue of Liberty, you know, from different places in New York, but I never saw it as an immigrant coming in. I think it was 2004, I decided I, I was in New York, and I said, I'm just going to do this. Got on this uh, tourist ship, and I stood there and saw the Statue of Liberty as if I were coming in as an immigrant. You know, that's something that I cherish and will always remember how important that was to me and how important it is today, I think, to any immigrant that comes to the U.S. We lived in New York for six months. My father couldn't find work. They were looking for someone with my father's skills in Jacksonville, Florida. And my father, we, he applied. And at that time, there was no such thing as going there and being interviewed and all that sort of thing. He sent them his credentials and was hired. We got on the train and went. And then I grew up in Jacksonville from age six on. My father was a Hebrew scholar, and he had a very nice collection of books that he had bought along the way as he was being trained and then as a uh, rabbinical scholar. He made covers for every one of those books and he packed every one of them and, and everyone it came to Columbia with us and then he we packed them and they came to the U.S. with us. And he had built a special bookcase for those books and they were in the living room of my parents' condo. Well, when my mother passed away and I sold her condo, we packed all those books up. When they created the Judaica Library at the Smathers Library in, at the University of Florida in Gainesville, um, you know, I told them about these books, and so we donated, she and I donated those books to the Judaica Library in Gainesville. They did such a beautiful job creating that library, and they have a special room of uh, rare books. They built a special bookcase that, where those books are. But that was very gratifying, and I, I was happy that they found a home where people can come and use them. A lot of what you what you read about in uh, the history about what happened in the various places in Germany, that all that happened after we left. And so we were just fortunate that we were able to get away before that. We need to learn the lessons of how the Holocaust came about and the fact that there was a Holocaust. And there are too, too often you can read there is someone who's denying that it ever happened. And that's why I, I want to tell my story and that's why so many people have told theirs. We have to learn about human behavior and what motivates people to do the things that they do. These are the lessons that we need to learn from this. You know, at my age, I can only do so much, and the one thing I can do is tell my story, how the Holocaust came about, and how my family managed to get away from it. <laughs>